Today, software touches every part of our world. It's not just in front of my computer, but it also influences how I interact with my phone, to my car, gaming systems, and consumer devices. My name is Jeff Wayne. I'm a product manager in our fundamental AI research organization. What that means is that I try to understand customer needs and the eventual impact that we can bring to the world through, you, through AI. I'm here along with my colleague to talk to you about Code Llama and how it can be used to improve and create software that is integrated in every part of our lives. I'll talk to you about the landscape, its challenges, our vision of an AI-assisted software development future, Code Llama, an overview of the model, special features, performance, and a demo and tutorial at the end. While software is so pervasive in our society, we also recognize its challenges. Creating software can be pretty hard, as you all developers already understand this. First, you have to be trained in it. And second, for developers, most of our time actually isn't spent coding. It's spent digging into an AI, a code base we're probably not familiar with, What's the architecture? Where should I be debugging? What API is being used? Who set up the library like this? In the meantime, just making sure the code is well tested and robust. This can be challenging, frustrating, and sometimes a time sink. So currently, when we have these problems, our solutions may be somewhat limited. We could ask a friend, a colleague, hoping they have experienced a similar situation. We go online, search forums, as you all know, can be a hit and miss, depending on how unique or generic your situation is. And most often, you're on your own, and we just go through trial and error, try to figure out what the issue is. So how do we overcome this? Well, what if there's an AI expert programmer, pair programmer, that can help you and complement your workflow? Tasks that take a long time for a human to form may actually be faster with the assistance of an AI pair programmer. For example, it takes a person probably a while learning a new programming language, where an AI model, having been trained across multiple languages, can assist you right away. Another example, reading and learning a large code base takes time, whereas a computer is probably pretty good at processing large blocks of text for you. So as AI gets better, we imagine a future where it will be more productive and efficient for you to leverage a pair programmer, AI pair programmer, as you code. So if there's bugs, you can ask the model, hey, what's wrong with my code? Or can you rewrite this? Can you document and tell me what's happening? Or simply, can you complete the rest of this function? We want AI to help you with all these questions. Our vision is that AI tools can make software development much more productive. And in fact, developers also share the sentiment. In a recent survey, increasing productivity is seen as the biggest benefit that developers have in AI tools. The good news is also that a majority of these respondents, at 77%, also have a favorable and very favorable sentiment towards the use of AI tools. So that said, I think we're still in the early stages, and we want to make these tools even better. So to that end, last month, we released Code Llama. It's a code-specific model that can follow natural instructions, gener generate code, and assist in code completion. Code Llama is built on top of Llama 2, Meta's pre-trained LLM, and we took it and traded it even further on the coding-specific data sets and for longer, so it gets really good at code. It delivers state-of-the-art quality amongst publicly available code models that you can download and host. So we hope that this will improve your productivity and make it even easier while you're creating amazing software. Our vision and realization of Code Llama's potential also cannot just be realized by Meta or any one company alone. It takes a village and an open one at that. That's why we've enabled commercial licenses for third parties to build on top of its foundation. The model weights are free to download, and we've also published a paper describing how it works. Code Llama will be enhanced by the community through improvements and also the applications that you all will pioneer. These, there will be ideas that we haven't even thought of internally, nor have the capacity to build them ourselves. And that's the influence the community will have of the future of an AI-assisted software development world. So speaking of the community, we've released Code Llama just one month ago. And it's been exciting to witness the incredible adoption since that release. This has been one of the most well-received launches of the year. And in the first week, 
on, of the launch. On GitHub, we saw over 9,000 stars of people favoriting this. We've also integrated Colama on Hugging Face, one of the most popularly used AI platform and library for the open source community. You can download the model on Hugging Face. And in just the first week, we saw over 100,000 downloads where the community has been improving with their own versions of Codelama. So a couple of interesting examples of that. We saw Find and Wizard Coder took Codelama and traded on their own data sets, measured it on coding benchmarks, and were able to improve the correctness of these code outputs by another 20% on the test set. That's really exciting. Additionally, Hugging Face has also extended Codelama to VS Code IDE extension. So you can start using Codelama uh, to assist in your code completion right away in that editor. So overall, we've listened to the needs of the developers, made Codelama pu publicly available, and early results show that people are getting really productive use out of it. So we're excited to see what you do with it. But first, I'd like to hand it off to my colleague, Baptiste, who will show you how, to, how it works and what it means to put into practice. Thank you, Jeff. These models have the potential to change the way people code and learn to code. It's such an exciting moment, and I'm looking forward to digging into the details of Codelama with you and showing how you could use Codelama in practice. My name is Baptiste, and I'm a research scientist in our fundamental AI research organization. We have three models in the Codelama family. Codelama, Codelama Python, and Codelama Instruct. Codelama is what we call our base model. It is trained from Lama 2 on 500 billion additional tokens related to code. It supports popular programming languages, such as Python, C++, JavaScript, Bash, and many more. It has a lot of general knowledge about programming and can either be used directly or fine-tuned for tons of use cases. Colama Python was further specialized on Python and truly really excels at Python code generation. Colama Instruct is actually designed to be used differently. It can follow instructions like ChatGPT and Lama 2 Chat can. Basically, you can ask it any question, for instance, how to generate a function, how to update your code to a new version of the library, or how to debug your code. Codelama Instruct will follow your instructions and answer. Codelama, uh, Codelama Python, and Codelama Instruct form our family of Codelama models. The based and Python models are designed to be used for code completion, for instance, in an IDE, and the Instruct version was designed to power Code Assistant Chatbot. All the Codelama models are released with a license allowing for both research and commercial use. And these models come in three different sizes, with 7 billion, 13 billion, and 34 billion parameters. Models of different sizes can basically be used for the same task, uh, but smaller models are faster and generally easier to use. The 7B model uh, can easily be run on a single GPU or even on a CPU on a laptop. And it generates answers very quickly with very low latency. So uh, you may wonder why would you want to use the 34 uh, billion parameters model? Uh, the answer is that while it is slower, it's also more robust and it can generate better code. It can still uh, generate answers faster than you can read them uh, when running on the right type of hardware. And um, you can actually start with the smaller models to test Codelama in production and upgrade to the 34B model later to get the best possible performance. So in practice, smaller models can be run on laptops and are often used for tasks where latency is critical, such as code completion in an IDE. And uh, here are a few details on uh, training the base code lama. In terms of compute, um, training the base model is by far uh, the most costly part. We start with Lama 2, uh, which is important uh, because we estimate that we'll, we would have needed twice the compute resources to get the same performance if we started from scratch. 
And it's a big part of what makes Codelama a great model, despite it using less compute uh, than other models out there. We call it the base model because it gives all of our other models their basic code understanding and programming capabilities. We also added two new features to Lama 2 so that Codelama supports more use cases for code. The first one is long context support, allowing uh, to use context from many different files at the same time to generate the code that fits in your code base. We support up to 100,000 tokens, and it corresponds to about 8,000 lines of code. Uh, many competing models can keep the context of a single long file. And uh, imagine, for instance, that you uh, need to add a function to a large file of, say, uh, 500 lines of code. So uh, models only, only 300 lines of code will lose, most of, uh, will lose some of the context, such as uh, the imports um, of, or some of the functions that are defined the same file. With Codelama, uh, you can take the entire context of your file, but you can even add a lot of context from other files in your code base, or even some documentation in order to generate the best code for your code base and your use case. And uh, yeah, for comparison, many of our competitors, as well as Lama2, support context of up to 4,000 tokens only. With Colama, we bring a 25x increase to the amount of context that our model can use. The, the second feature that we added uh, is infilling. The reason is that most programmers don't write code linearly, starting from the top and going to the bottom. Infilling allows Colama to support many real-world use cases. It means that it can generate code in the middle of a file using the context coming both before and after your cursor. In this example there, um, it can generate a class definition from an example of usage of this class that comes after in the main. I will present some numbers in the following slides, and uh, let me first explain to you how we benchmark code generation models. A canonical benchmark for that is called human eval, and consists in uh, completing functions from their doc string and signature. So here, uh, let me walk you through an example. Uh, Codelama is asked to generate a way to compute uh, unique uh, with a, a list argument, and we're also given the doc string. And uh, it needs to generate the highlighted code, uh, which is a return of sorted of list of set of L. And then we can test the result using unit test. And uh, this figure there uh, compares code Lama to Lama2 and to some of our competitors on such a multilingual generation benchmark. As you can expect, larger models, so those that are more on the right, perform better for both the code Lama and the Lama2 families of models. Uh, you can see that because they are higher on the y-axis, uh, which shows the performance. And our smallest model, called Lama 7 billion, already outperforms Lama 2 70 billion on code, even though it has only one-tenth of the parameters. It is also roughly on the same level as Codex V1 and Starcoder, which is the previous best open model, despite having less parameters than them. When it comes to our 13 billion and 34 billion models, they clearly outperform other open models for code generation. In this example there, um, we will test a Codelama Instruct 34B, which is our most powerful version of Codelama and which was trained to follow instructions. Uh, here we'll ask the model to generate a simple version of the Pong game in Python. To do that, it will need to first understand the assignment and also to make some design choices, such as choosing uh, the keyboard keys that uh, are going to be used to move the paddles. And it will also need to generate correct code. So as you can see there, uh, the model generates the code as well as some explanations. 
and uh, it generated this code in just a few seconds. And now if you execute it, you can already start playing this game that you generated on the fly. Then uh, the nice thing is that you can also take this code, copy it, and modify it to fit your exact preferences. And you can even ask CodeLama to modify it for you uh, in chat mode. In uh, this example there, um, we'll show how CodeLama can be used in VS Code. And here we are going to use the uh, base model uh, using the Hugging Face VS Code plugin. It's very easy to install and supports the base CodeLama 13B. For this demo, uh, let's imagine that we are a data scientist and we need to get a data visualization for housing prices in the London area. Uh, we just know that the data is in a SQL database called housinglondon.db and uh, the name of the table. And uh, let's say that we have no experience with Python, so we don't want to write any code ourselves, but we'll just prompt the model to do what we want. So uh, here, what we want to do first is to read the data from the SQL database. So here, we prompted the model to do uh, just that with a comment, which also gives the name of the table and of the database to read. Uh, CodeLama manages to import appropriate libraries and to connect to the database. And now we prompted to uh, read it into a pandas data frame to make it easier to work with. And we also want to print the names of all the columns in order to uh, give them to the model. So here we run the code, got the column names, and uh, we want to add them as a comment uh, so that CodeLama can access it and uh, so that it knows what it can do. Okay, so uh, now that it's done, we can simply ask the model to uh, plot the housing prices. Here it comes up with something reasonable, um, and uh, you can execute it, uh, visualize the plot, and you can see that uh, it isn't very uh, readable for this particular data set because they have the very long tail of expensive properties that makes it very difficult to visualize the bulk of the properties in London. So what we can do is that we can prompt the model to correct it by removing the properties sold for more than 5 million pounds and also to increase the number of bins. So that's what we do. Uh, it makes these changes. And if you execute, you can see this updated uh, plot in which the bulk of the properties is uh, much easier to visualize. So uh, now uh, let's do something that requires a bit of computation. Let's plot the price for per square foot for properties in London. Uh, we need to compute it first as price divided by area, and CodeLama can find the right fields thanks to the command, to the command that we put above. Uh, so here is a plot. It looks similar to the price distribution. And here you can see that most of the properties were sold for a bit less than uh, 1,000 pounds per square foot. OK, um, so now uh, we'll try something a bit more complicated. Uh, here, uh, we ask CodeLama to compute the average price and price per square foot for each house type, and also to plot them together and not one after the other. It requires to do a group by operation, and CodeLama does that. The plot that we obtain there uh, shows, for instance, that studio apartments that you can see on the right of the plot are the cheapest house type, but they are actually quite expensive per square foot, which makes sense uh, since studios are small, generally. And penthouses that are just on their left are the most expensive and also the most expensive type of property per square foot. OK, so now look, let's look at what happens if we uh, visualize something with many categories, such as the price per city or county in the London area. And uh, here you can see that uh, we get something reasonable, but the city names on the x-axis overlap, and it's unreadable. So we can prompt the model to correct it by writing the names vertically. Um, so here we do that and it manages to do it uh, by doing a rotation on the x-sticks. And uh, you can see here that the prices are shown vertically. And so, for instance, you can see that on the left, 
um, this bar corresponds to uh, the city of London itself, and that the most expensive town in the London area is called Offshot, and you can see it towards the right of the plot. So here we've done some simple data visualization on this data set without having to write any code ourselves. And of course, Codelama is not limited to Python data visualization use cases. You can actually use it with any common programming language and for many use cases. I also want to remind you that you can uh, download these models and run them locally completely offline. So it means that you could have a local code assistant that doesn't require any internet connection. Codelama could help you even when you're on the plane and can't access the documentation or online forums. OK, so now I'll give you a bit of time to scan this QR code if you want to get more resources and how, on how to run and fine-tune Codelama. You will find some links there uh, to some awesome third-party tools and libraries that were built by the community after the release of Codelama. We also added some links to open source projects providing code to fine-tune Lama or code Lama.